Well, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Matt Brenner, and I'm going to share with you um, a design pattern that I cooked up uh, to solve my own, make my own life easier. And of course, it's the nature of design patterns that there are, there are approaches to solving a problem. And so if you decide that you like the approach, then uh, you're welcome to take it and twist it and bend it to, to your own needs. Um, and I'll, we'll work through uh, the motivation for the design pattern and then uh, some examples of how it might be used in a, in a variety of, of contexts. Uh, we're going to talk about stuff that you guys all know about. Um, in Java, um, callbacks occur within processes. Th th this is true in Java, right? Uh, Android adds another layer of, of callbacks, which is what finally is the straw that broke this camel's back. But in any case, uh, threads do callbacks. One thread will spawn another and have it do some work. And then when the thread finishes its work, it'll do a callback to provide some information, result, et cetera. Um, callbacks are also widely used uh, to decouple domain uh, and interface so that uh, the interface gets a call back uh, from the domain um, to indicate that, that something's completed or some data has changed, it needs to update the interface, et cetera. And there's nothing new about that. Here's an example of a typical, I'm going to call it a worker thread callback. So we have some class. Uh, it wants some work to be done. It wants to uh, do something. And what it's going to do is create a worker thread. So this class extends thread in the usual way. And when the thread completes, notice uh, when, it, when it creates the, the worker object, it passes in its object ID to support the callback later. And down in the worker thread, it does some work in a run method. And then uh, it invokes complete so that uh, it knows it's done. And what I did in this case, and I think this is fairly typical, is I cooked up some interface that's very simple. It is a single method just to support the callback. How many of you have cooked up interfaces for this very purpose? Yeah, I mean. It, and how many of you get tired of trying to pick names for these things, right? Because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a one-shot. OK. So um, I'm using UML here, and probably you're, you're familiar. But th this is the, the UML notation for inheritance. So worker is a subclass of thread. And this uh, unfilled-in triangle with a dashed line is the UML for, for an interface. So the main, oops, oops, I didn't mean that. So the main class um, implements. The, the one that, that's invoking the worker thread implements uh, the interface, and of course, uh, the worker thread extends uh, thread. On top of that, Android makes extensive use of intents, which is a really charming, powerful, loose coupling to allow you to invoke other processes, ask the operating system for services, et cetera. And oftentimes, um, what we want is some information back. Maybe we want back the, UR, the URI of a picture, or maybe we want you know, some file name or some such thing. So, of course, Android has um, a, a, met, a, a method for doing these callbacks, um, and that's what we're going to focus on primarily is the callback from one activity to another to return some sort of result. Okay, so here's the scenario. Um, what I want to do is get an answer to a question. Uh, do you want to delete all the messages? And the user's going to type click yes or click no. And what I'm doing is I'm launching an activity that pops up that uh, dialog. And so I want to get back the result, which is going to be either yes or no. So um, how many of you enjoy the, the, the syntax that's required to uh, launch an intent? Right, it's, it's not a lot of fun. So as a bonus, in addition to the design pattern, I'm going to show you a, um, a technique that I also developed for hiding, burying once and for all a lot of this complexity. But in standard Android, what I would do is I've got some activity, an activity, and it wants to um, invoke another activity that's going to pop up this dialog and get a callback. So down here is where I start the activity for result. Is that right? And I'm passing it some identifier. And later, what the uh, activity is going to do is return the result. And I'll capture it here in on activity result. This is all familiar, yes? OK. And by the way, if you have questions, just shout them out. Um, you don't have to wait till the end. If something's unclear, please feel free to ask. So this is the calling activity. And then down in the called activity, I'm calling this activity uh, get yes, no. And so in the on create method, you know, it's getting some parameters so it can display the title and so forth. And then eventually, um, 
the user clicks yes or no, and I invoke the done method, and what done does is create an intent, um, putting in the result, and uh, the finish method is gonna then terminate this activity, and uh, the on activity result in the invoker will be, will be invoked. All familiar, yes? Okay. We end up with a bit of a mess because we have interface clutter. How many times are you implementing you know, three or four or more interfaces, some of which are just to do a callback? Um, we can have multiple callback forms in a single class, and of course the intent syntax can drive anyone crazy. So I cooked up this um, design pattern called event consumer. So event consumer is an interface, and it has two methods. This, this is somewhat reminiscent of um, observer, where there are two update methods, one that takes a parameter, one that doesn't. Then uh, we have our, our activity class. And what I've done um, is I've created a class that I insert between activity and the particular activity that I want to create. I call it super activity. It's, a, it's the super activity of the activity that I want to create. And what it does is it provides, I tuck a bunch of methods in there that I want to use over and over and over. And of course, I have an opportunity if I want to, to implement um, these event methods. Typically, um, in super activity, I, I implement event, which simply calls uh, with, no, with one parameter, which calls the other event method. Okay, then the, the activity that I actually want to, 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 uh, to perform implements event consumer, and it's a subclass of super activity. So far, so good? And here's why I would be required to, to provide the implementation for the other event method. I create a lot of dialogues that uh, are based on activities, and so I tuck some of the commonality into this uh, class called dialogue activity. And then here is activity get yes, no. This is the one that's going to ask the user for, for yes or no. So far, so good? This is a description of the classes involved in the design pattern. Okay, now let's see how we use this design pattern uh, in the three contexts um, or, or problem situations that I've described, from a worker thread uh, to decouple domain and interface and uh, uh, to, to capture uh, the results, for example, of intents. Okay, worker thread callback. The old version, the way we're used to, is over here uh, of the caller and of the worker. No, nothing new here. Here's a new version. Um, Notice I'm implementing event consumer. So I'm providing this event method. This is the same. Um, I'm doing something, and I'm creating a, a worker thread. And one of the things that I do is I pass in uh, the ID, to, an ID to identify what event I'm going to be responding to, because this code might ultimately respond to a variety of events. So I picked a name like the works complete. And then down in the event method, what I get is this object, uh, this event ID, so I can have a switch to respond to the particular event, and there's an opportunity to pass in some data that may be useful in performing the response. Down at the um, at the worker thread level, what I when I invoked uh, when I created the worker thread, I passed in an object ID, and the decoupling is done through uh, allowing this thing to be a reference to an event consumer rather than to any particular activity. Is that right? And I passed in the event ID. One of the nice things about this is I can pick the event IDs in the application. The system doesn't, doesn't care in the least. So what I do is I capture the caller ID and the event ID. Uh, the run method gets invoked. And when it's finished, it simply passes the event message back to the caller, passing the event ID in this case. And it could pass uh, an object as well if there was data that I wanted to return. So. I haven't, uh, I haven't saved a great deal in here. It looks fairly similar. The benefit that will accrue will be from the, the fact that I only have this one interface, so I don't have to implement multiple interfaces to do different th worker thread callbacks. And also, we'll use this mechanism for the other kinds of um, callbacks as well. Let's take a look at uh, typical domain to interface callback. So I've got some widget. It's implementing event consumer. And again, I'm picking some name for the event. I'm going to call it update. It's an integer. Um, and so what I'm going to do is um, add an observer. 
passing it, uh, the reference to the event consumer and the, the identifier for what kind of event it is. And in my event method, again, in my switch block, I switch on event and I can receive some data as well. Um, so this is the old version. I would implement um, Observer. How many of you know the Observer pattern? Yep. I mean, it's one of the most widely used. Yeah. So I, I implement Observer, um, add Observer, and then I would have an update method where I get back a reference to the thing I'm, um, I'm observing and the data. And what I've done is I've swapped out essentially the update method for an event method. Okay. Down in the, in, in, the, uh, in the domain, I've got something that's being observed, so I'm calling it some domain thing. In the old, in the traditional observer method, it would extend observable. And down there somewhere, there would be some domain change that I want to report to the interface. And so what it would do is, this is standard Java, right? Set changed and notify observers. Yes? In the new version, take a look for a moment. I'd call this at observer, of course I could call it anything. And instead of taking a reference, um, well it, it, again, it, it, as per event uh, consumer, it takes a reference to an event consumer and the identifier for the ID, uh, for the event rather, stashes them away. And then down when it's determined that the domain has changed, as before, it sends the event message, some event has occurred, passing the ID to identify the event, as well as whatever data needs to be passed back. Now. I'm not suggesting that you throw away Observer because this is simpler in some regards. Anybody see anything noticeable? A deficiency, if you will, in this approach in this context? Yeah? Up in the up in the in the in the place that implements the event consumer, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I cooked this up. I've started using it. I've used it for six months or so, and I'm you know polishing one place and another. And, and that's a, that's an excellent idea. Okay, um, so we have uh, uh, one one glaring uh, deficiency, if you will, is that this doesn't keep any list of of observers. Is that right? So if there are three. Um, observers, you'd have to build this out a little bit more. Okay. Now let's take a look at intents. Um, if, let's start off looking at the calling activity. So in the calling activity, um, what we typically do is uh, set up the intent, pass in whatever information is necessary, and uh, then on, in act, on activity result, um, I get back whatever information I need. I pluck out the data I'm interested in and then I do what I want with it. Um, in event consumer, again, um, I extend uh, super activity in the ask yes, no method. Um, I've created a little helper class called launcher that hides a lot of the intent setup. We'll take a brief look at that. that that's separate from this design pattern, but I, I find it to be quite useful. And I've got a bunch of different um, constructors for it so that I can use it in a variety of contexts. Also, what's this about? r.string.delete all the time. I'm just uh, concerned always about uh, localization. So rather than passing in strings, I've passed in uh, string constants, I've passed in references to, uh, uh, to, to, to strings that may be localized. And then I invoke the launch method on launcher once I've created it and set it up, and it does you know, the dirty work of starting the activity for, for the result and so forth. Uh, and I tell it which class it is uh, that I want it to uh, which activity it is I want it to launch. And then again, I have my uh, event method, and I've got my same switch case, and again, I'm switching on the uh, event ID. In the uh, called activity, this is the old version, this is the new version. In on create, I did some setup, and then I had click yes and click no, and then in the done method, I set up the intent and uh, did the return. And in the new uh, version, I'm extending dialog activity, which you know, has some support, um, for example, a done method. And in click no and click yes, I, I've tucked that away up in there. And so I end up with a, a, a simple, if you will, a simple uh, uh, called activity as well. 
I mentioned this uh, helper class that I call Launcher, and <clears throat> Launcher takes, as I said, there are a bunch of different constructors. And then you can add whatever methods you want for your context. I'm frequently dealing with, uh, you know, maximum numbers of digits and cell phone numbers and stuff like that. Um, I can specify whether I want to allow the user to press the backspace key or whether those aborts should be trapped and the user should be forced. There should be some response and saying, you know, you must blah, blah, blah. So, and my point is, um, Launcher saves me the, 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 tr I, I, uh, the trouble of setting up intents over and over and over. And what we end up with is a unified approach to callbacks. And here's an example, uh, blue, orange, and red, of the three different kinds of callbacks that, that we've discussed and how they all fit rather neatly into a single uh, unified approach. So blue is the worker thread. Now I've defined three different events. Completed, that's the worker thread. Update, that's the domain interface. And got yes, no, which is the event corresponding to the intent so I've got my do something method, which creates uh, a thread and starts it, passing incomplete. I've got uh, the domain thing that uh, I'm passing my object ID to so I can be notified of updates. And I have ask yes, no, which creates a launcher, passing it um, got yes, no. And then I've got a single um, event method with a switch to deal with the different kinds of events. And so once I enter this method, um, it's to a great extent not relevant whether the callback was done by any one of the, the particular mechanisms. And that's the event consumer pattern. I do want to point out that there is one unsatisfying aspect in addition to the one that was raised a few moments ago. And that is that um, I, I, I can use event consumer in, in many contexts, in ordinary Java programming as well, when I'm not dealing with activities. It's, it's a generally useful, I, I find, a generally useful design pattern. Uh, but in the context of, of Android, I'm frequently uh, letting my activities be event consumers, and I've, I've tucked a, a bunch of functionality into super activity, and of course, then I, I implement the event method. It's pretty natural, of course, to want to do the same thing in list activity, because it's you know, so similar. Um, and in doing that, what I have had to do is create a super list activity, which is a parallel to super activity, and actually shares a lot of functionality. And there's an inelegance there in, in, in repeating that. Um, but as a practical matter, it's, it's worked well, and I'm, I'm still trying to sort out what the best way to share that commonality is. And I'm hopeful that I'll find a, a, a way to unify uh, these superclasses. Okay, thanks.